I want to thank you for coming today. It's been our position from the very beginning that houses of worship, constitutional rights have been violated. The governor of California and his reopening plan placed churches in phase three with entertainment venues. As we have stated before, churches are not a form of entertainment. They are a central part of our society and have been recognized so ever since the foundation of our country. Our founding fathers recognized this to the extent that they placed special protection for the free exercise of religion in our Constitution. Every government official has taken an oath to protect that Constitution. I believe that oaths should be taken very seriously regardless of political consequences. Our national and state Constitution has been violated. Monday, our nation paused to remember those brave men and women who paid the ultimate sacrifice that we could enjoy the freedoms given to us by the Constitution. To stand idly by and allow those rights to be trampled upon would be a disservice and a grave dishonor to those brave soldiers. Last week, the United States Department of Justice Civil Rights Division sent a letter to Governor Newsom raising several civil rights concerns with the treatment of houses of worship in his executive order and in his reopening plan. In the letter, Attorney General William Barr is quoted as saying, quote, even in times of emergency when reasonable and temporary restrictions are placed on rights, the First Amendment and federal statutory laws prohibit discrimination against religious institution and religious believers. Thus, government may not impose special restrictions on religious activity that do not also apply to similar non-religious activity. Simply put, there is no pandemic exception to the United States Constitution and its Bill of Rights. The letter from the Department of Justice went on to say, quote, laws that do not treat religious activities equally with comparable non-religious activities are subject to heightened scrutiny under the free exercise clause of the First Amendment. Quote, religious gatherings may not be singled out for unequal treatment compared to other non-religious gatherings that have the same effect on government public health interests absent from the most compelling reasons. When the governor of Kentucky tried to stop Maryville Baptist Church from holding services, the church sued. The case made its way all the way to the Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit. In a 3-0 opinion, the court granted an injunction for in-church services. The court said, quote, the governor has offered no good reason for refusing to trust the congregants who promise to use care in worship and just the same way it trusts accountants, lawyers, and laundromat workers to do the same. How can the same person, and this is from the court, how can the same person be trusted to comply with social distancing and other health guidelines in secular settings, but not be trusted to the same in religious settings? The distinction defies explanation, or at least the governor has not provided one, close quote. The Court of Appeals continued, while the law may take periodic naps during a pandemic, we will not let it sleep through one. A similar case in Southern California has made its way to the Ninth Circuit Court, but lost there in a two to one decision. The Ninth Circuit Court is the most overturned court in our country. That case is currently being appealed to the United States Supreme Court where we are confident, as, we stated by, as was stated by the dissenting opinion, uh, that the United States Supreme Court will agree with the Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit and uphold the free exercise clause in our Constitution for churches. Last week, the President of the United States in a strong statement to the governors of our country declared that houses of worship are essential and instructed governors to uphold the Constitution and open houses of worship immediately. We believe that it is because of the lawsuits across the nations where churches have prevailed and the letter from the United States Department of Justice Civil Rights Division warning the governor of California that the civil rights of churches were being violated, plus direction given by the president of the United States to open churches, that the governor of California had no choice but to acknowledge the unfair treatment of churches in California by declaring that they could open their doors. We are thankful that the governor has recognized by whatever means that churches are an essential part of our communities and has moved the reopening of churches from phase three to the current phase. But with even the recognition of churches, the governor's guidelines still treats churches unfairly. The governor's recent guidelines for prices of worship limit religious services to 25% of normal occupancy or 100 people, whichever is less. While we appreciate the governor's recognition that churches must be permitted to assemble, the governor's occupancy restriction is arbitrary and unreasonable. 
Our theater seats 1,400 people, but we were only allowed to have 100 people. That is approximately 7% occupancy. No other business is being placed under these restrictions. Why are churches being treated differently? If restaurants can resume operations in Fresno County at 50% occupancy, so should the church be able to. Why are churches being treated differently? Shopping malls are opening in Fresno with more than 100 people. Why are churches being treated differently? If a person can walk into a restaurant and sit down with social distancing guidelines and enjoy physical food being served to them, why can't a person walk into a church and sit down and have spiritual food served to them? Why are churches being treated differently? In fact, the state guidelines only require six-foot social distancing in restaurants without any limit of occupancy. Why are churches being treated differently? If grocery stores, Costco, or Home Depot operate under the guidelines of social distancing, why should a church be treated any differently? The Free Exercise Clause and Constitutional Jurisprudence forbid such arbitrary restrictions on places of worship. Tuesday, we appealed to the County Board of Supervisors to send a strong message to the Governor of California that the County of Fresno would not violate the oath that they have taken to defend the Constitution and would not discriminate against churches by allowing them to operate under the same restrictions that other businesses have been placed under. The Board decided, rather, in a three to two vote to merely adopt the Governor's plan. There comes a time when enough is enough. There comes a time when no one else will speak up for you that you must speak up for yourself. When the Apostle Paul recognized that his rights as a Roman citizen were being violated, he appealed to a higher authority, which was Caesar. We will follow his biblical example and appeal to the higher authority in this land, which is the Constitution of the United States. It is our position that the civil rights of churches have been violated. We agree with the Department of Justice, which stated in their closing paragraph to their, in their letter to Governor Newsom, quote, that the Constitution calls for California to do more to accommodate religious worship. We agree with the professor of law and religion at Washington University and St. Louis School of Law who stated, quote, as the government starts allowing other non-religious institutions to operate, they need to have a very clear reason as to why those are not allowed for churches. Rosa Parks was told that she had to give up her seat because she was a black woman and a white, wo white man wanted to sit down. That was wrong. That was a violation of her civil rights. That was injustice. Thank God that she did not get up out of that seat but was willing to take a stand for what she believes was right. And because of her brave stand, a movement was birthed that changed our nation. Someone has said, well, why make such a big deal about this? The governor has let you go back to church. The governor did not give us our rights. Our rights, as stated in the Constitution, are given to us by our Creator. The governor and all elected officials have taken an oath to defend those rights. When elected officials will not uphold their oath and defend the Constitution, the only recourse is for individuals to defend those rights. Thank God we live in a country that all men are created equal, and it is truly a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Yesterday, after consulting with our attorney and meeting with the leadership of our church last night, Cornerstone Church has decided to pursue legal action to protect the religious freedom of houses of worship in the state of California. Therefore, our church will be joining a lawsuit in the Eastern District Federal Court where we will be represented by Advocates for Faith and Freedom, Tyler and Bursch, and the National Center for Law and Policy. We will be seeking action against the County of Fresno Health Director, the State of California Health Director, and the Governor of California. We expect to have our claims joined with a lawsuit filed by Cross Culture Christian Church from Lodi, California. We are taking this action because of the serious needs of our congregation and our community. Churches and other places of worship offer a safety net to the brokenhearted, to the unemployed, to the alcoholic, to the drug addict, and to others that need counseling or just a helping hand. With suicide on the rise, we are compelled to resume our ministry at full capacity. We will also pursue uh, our claims in order to preserve our constitutional rights with the goal of ensuring that our constitutional liberties and that those of other houses of worship are never inf infringed on in this manner in the future. This Sunday morning, Cornerstone Church will open its doors to exercise our constitutional rights to assemble and to freely worship. We recognize that this, there is a seriousness to this pandemic. 
If anyone cares for the people who walk through the doors of our church, it's me. I've dedicated over a quarter of a century of my life to this community and to this congregation. These are not our customers. These are people that we have been with through the challenges and through the victories of life. I would do nothing to put them in harm's way, but will do everything to keep them safe. It is my belief that by keeping the church doors closed, we are denying them a vital part of their religious freedom, the ability to gather together. While we're thankful for the technology that allowed us to be able to stream our services live into people's homes, and we'll continue to do that, I don't think there's anyone who will disagree that it is not the same as meeting in person. We are under a scriptural mandate to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Again, we recognize the seriousness of the matter. This Sunday, we will be operating at 25% capacity. We believe we should be allowed to meet at 50% capacity, which is the standard for other businesses. But in a spirit of cooperation, we are willing to begin at 25% occupancy as the governor uh, instituted. Strict social distancing guidelines will be upheld. Sanitation protocol will be in place. There will be no children's services provided. We encourage those who are in a compromised health position, either because of age or illness, not to attend. We'll be issuing masks at the door for anyone who does not have one. We will be safe. We just want to be treated fairly. If a big box store can do this, so can a church. The question is, why shouldn't the church be allowed to do it? Why should the governor have the ability to restrict the attendance to church in a way that he has not restricted the attendance to non-religious activity? That is the definition of discrimination. Edmund Burke once said, for evil to triumph, all it takes is for good men to do nothing. Cornerstone Church will not sit idly by and do nothing. We're going to do something.